Hey, I'm Donnie and you're watching the E30 shop. Today we're going to talk about how to buy a good E30. So I contacted a friend of mine, Aaron Yule, and asked him to bring his 87 E30 coupe over. So we're going to check it out. And here he comes. Hey Donnie, how's it going? Hey Aaron, great. Hey, so uh, what year and model is this car? 87, uh, it's a 325. Is it an E or an I? It is an E. Okay, awesome. Well, let's uh, let's have a go over. Okay, so we're gonna start and we're gonna see if the car has been wrecked before. We're gonna validate the VIN and the model of this car. You wanna follow me, Aaron? We'll come on around here. So the first thing we wanna look at is this VIN right here. And every car in the BMW E30 line has a VIN number. We're gonna look at that on decals all around the car. And right here it says 07 of 86. So this was built in 7 of 86, which means it's a 1986 model year car. Okay, one of the first VIN decals that we're gonna find is gonna be on the end of the door jam. And it ends in 4593. So that means this is an original VIN decal to the car. The place we're gonna find the VIN is stamped right into the cowl and it ends right underneath the wiper. You'll see that the entire number stamped in and it says 4593. The other place we're gonna find it is right here on the dashboard and it's pinned in and it'll say the entire VIN ending in 4593. So we're gonna check the passenger side of the car. The first thing we're gonna look at is the sticker right here and you'll see it's got the original BMW VIN ending in 4593. If this was not an original fender, it would have a DOT and a number on it, or you wouldn't find the sticker at all. Also right here, if I get my finger up in here, I can clean this off. You'll see the original hood ending in 4593. So we know the entire front of the car is original, which means the core support's probably original too. Now, one other thing we wanna look at back here, we're gonna check the passenger door. And we've got an original sticker ending in 4593. So we know that's the original door. And we're going to come back to the trunk. And we're going to find the same stickers here, but I don't know how to open the trunk. No, <laughs> no key. All right. Um, here we go. Here's the original trunk. Ends in 4593. A couple more pieces of information that you want to know is if a fender has been replaced, this seam seal from the factory will be broken and you can see it goes right over the nut. So this has never been removed. On a car that's had a fender replaced, this will be probably completely different and the nut will be free and clear. Another thing I wanna show you is right here on the driver's side strut tower, you'll see that it says lock silver metallic. This is the original BMW decal for the paint code uh, and the codes down here on, on each end. A couple things under the hood, we want to see if this is all original. Things that I like to look for is to see if the radiator fan shroud is on. The radiator cap that supports it and covers it to the front is missing. Goes through these two holes. And these light covers right here. One of them's on. If you look over here, you'll see one clip is not clipped in and the other one's missing. And then I also like to look at the battery tray right over here. And you can see that there is no rust on this battery tray at all. That is really clean and really nice and um, pretty unusual. Driver's side, I noticed a couple other things. I noticed it's got a little K&N sticker here, which just means this is the stock air filter and they have a K&N filter inside. It's nice to see that this is all complete and all here. Also, you know, here's just something I noticed. This is the ground, it goes right over here to the hood. Hey, some things that are nice to look for in the trunk or to see if you have all your tools. I do notice that the uh, antenna is missing, but I bet if I pulled this back, yeah, the power antenna bracket is there, but the power antenna unit is missing. Is the original Hirsch power antenna unit, which can be replaced easily. And then over here, we got the tool kit. And some of the tools are in here. It's missing the, uh, the little crank to help move the sunroof in case it jams up or a window regulator. Um, it's just missing maybe the screwdriver and the pliers, just a few things. And then down here under the spare tire cover, 
We're gonna check and see if it's spare tires here, and it is. I'm gonna pull this out. I wanna see what kind of shape this is in. And this is interesting. Down here we've got the original dead sound deadening material, and there's just no rust here at all. This crumbling is just some of the edge of this material coming off. So this is super original and rust free. Now over on this side, these are things that you're gonna look for. You're gonna wanna see if the original jack is in here. Lug nut wrench, best lug nut wrench in the world. And then you've got the latch for the Zach. One other thing to look at in the car is to make sure that the battery cover is here. Um, these are pretty easy to find. And on a coupe and a sedan, the batteries are in the back. And on a convertible, the batteries are in the front. Okay, we talked about the trunk area and the spare tire well, whether there's rust in there or not. Here are the areas on an E30 that rust. That's one of them. Another one are these two pockets that go down underneath the battery and down here in this thing. We call these rear pocket wells. And if you come around to the back of the car, right down here is where that usually rusts. These tires kick up a lot of stuff and it'll rust a hole right in here in the bottom of this pocket. These actually are in really good shape and there's a rust spot right here. This is on every E30. This is about 99.9% .9 rust free for an E30. And this rear apron down here is pretty rust free too. And this is the toe eye hook. Another spot to check on all the E30s is the entire rocker right here. And you'll see, here's the seam joint at the factory. And you can see where the quarter panel meets the rest of the rocker. Just this little bit of undercoating is coming off. That's actually not rust. And if we follow around to the front, the fenders are notorious for rusting right here. People have a tendency to jack the car at the fender seam. This is just body work. There's two frame rails underneath the front of the car. The jack goes another 10 inches in and you jack the car on the frame rail, not the bottom of the fender. This can easily be pulled out with pliers and recoated. One other spot to check is the sunroof. The sunroof is mounted onto the car by three hex screws on both sides. They tend to rust there a little bit. Um, you can replace the sunroof seal. It's about $138. It's actually really easy to do. I have a video where we replace a metal roof with a glass roof, and we'll show you how to replace the sunroof seal. So one other thing to look at at the cars besides the cracked dash is the glove box. Now this one actually works. It has the lev latches working. It's got the straps here to keep it down and it's got the owner's manual. Wow, that's that's really nice. And the service book. And wow, it looks like we have all of the owners, the original owners paperwork here. Years and years worth of documentation. If you ever have any of this, you should save it. And my friend Pete Real will tell you everything you buy for the car, throw the receipt in the glove box so you can find it. Wow, look at this. Floor mat installation, in case you don't know how to install a floor mat. <laughs> Just flipping through all this stuff. Whoa, this is the original window sticker. And I think, you think the price is in here somewhere? Oh, check that out. It's got our 4593 VIN, $22,225 for the base model. I know that the IS cars in 1986-87 were like $5,000 more. So that means a car like this brand new was $27,000 30-some years ago. That's freaking amazing. All right, now we're going to take the car and... Look at the interior and then uh, do a driving impression of the car. See how well it's put together. Have to adjust the seat for me. Aaron has long legs, I have short legs. Well, I guess the first thing I noticed right in here is that the uh, check panel is hanging and the mirror's missing. I'm gonna assume this broken mirror is the mirror. So we'll fix that later, make a video on it. Another thing to look at in this car is the steering wheel. This is the IS steering wheel. Um, so someone's upgraded the steering wheel on this base model car. 
I noticed that the leather stitching, here's the relief for it. The leather's off of this. And on eBay, you can get a replacement wrap that has the BMW color thread all in through here. And it's under $30. Another thing I've noticed is that it's got an M3 shift knob on here, which is pretty cool. This is easy to replace. The boots here, the plastic ring is missing. And uh, we'll make a quick video on how to replace that too. Um, this is an accessory someone's added. This can come out or stay in. I noticed that the uh, stereo is missing. Um, that can easily be replaced. But this check panel is in really good shape. The LED screen wearing out here is pretty common. You can actually get replacements for those too. They just slide in when you pull that whole piece out. Um, I want to show you the condition of the seats too. These are sport seats. So these are not the original one piece bottom comfort seats. These are uh, eight piece sport seats. And if you come over here and look at this passenger seat, you'll see these are eight panels. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight with the headrest. These are the nicest seats ever. People put them in 911s. They put them in um, all kinds of hot rods. So they're super comfortable. And if the foam's good, you can just recover them. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the back seat. Let's see what we have back here. This should flip forward. Oh, and it kind of does. Looks like we got some repair work to do here. Um, the carpet is blue, probably my favorite carpet. It's in really good shape. Um, the back seat, if you look in there, looks pretty good. Um, it's the original blue vinyl perforated back seat. And if you look at the back dash, that's the original eye dash that has the little tiny speakers. Um, the S models came with premium sound speakers, which Aaron has already bought another dashboard and we're gonna switch that out later. Well, we've checked out the whole outside of the car, the inside of the car. I think it's time to do a driving impression. So let's take it for a spin. So Aaron, jump in. Starts and runs really good. Idles at 700, that's great. We've got our check engine light, which is pretty normal. Hit that and find reverse. Uh-oh, it looks like someone put a really short shift kit in this. So I'll do my best. Runs good. Shifting's gonna be tricky. You can see it's raining now, so let's turn the wipers on. But we're still gonna drive it. go wipers work that's good the steering feels really good first gear there we go put our seat belt on first it's a bad habit Your engine feels really good. It's got all of its slow end torque. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the shop and just right down the street, maybe show you another project over there. Brakes work great. I think the only thing we need to deal with on this car is the body roll. It's got a lot of rear end swinging around so that means we need to go through all the bushings and um, that's not too bad to do we're just pulling up to the shop now and I uh, got something I want to show you it's cooler than that 59 Apache truck too all right this is what I want to show you come on over here So there'll be a big video on this build later, but I found two M3s, believe it or not, on a farm. And uh, we picked both of them up. And this was one of them. And uh, believe it or not, it's all here. So this is kind of cool if you want to come around behind me. This car's been hit really hard. So got some work to do. 
but I want to show you the inside of this car. It's missing the driver's seat and someone's stolen the cluster. But if you look in real close on the console to the right of the steering wheel, you'll see the bird's nest. <laughs> All right, so let me show you uh, why this car has the name it has. So this car is going to be called T-Bone. We're going to completely get this car running. We're going to do an S52 swap and we're going to drive it T-Bone. 